Hi Virgo! How is everyone doing? This is JJ. Welcome to my channel if you're new. Uh, if you're not new, uh, welcome back. And thank you for viewing your April, 2000 and April 2017 forecast. <laughs> so there was a, a sense of urgency for me to kind of record, to bring this video to you. Uh, a bit earlier than usual. I uh, wasn't planning on getting to Virgo until a little bit later. I had wanted to fit in at least one water sign video now since I already covered Taurus two days ago. Um, but like I said, there was this sense of urgency that came with needing to get your video in on time. For April 2017, that was what came to me while I was meditating. I feel like, Virgo, you're, uh, you're approaching your wit's end and you're, you're starting to get a little bit impatient at the progress of things in your life where it seems like things are about to happen but then, they, but then they're not happening. Something that keep, co keeps causing uh, a delay in things, like there is a rift in your progress uh, and it's starting to get on your nerves a little bit. So that was just the general vibe I am getting. <laughs> so at the bottom of the rider weight, this is pre-shuffled, okay? page of pentacles at the bottom of my deviant moon deck chariot. So what can we deduce from these overall energies with the page of pentacles? You are making slow progress towards a new line of work, a new line of career, or a new way of living in general. So the page of pentacles talks about, pentacles in general talks about very a very practical energy, practical source so uh, things that you can touch and feel and manipulate in the environment around you we're not talking about emotions we're not talking about thoughts we're talking about actual physical uh sorry seriously i've been like this for the past few videos where i just go blank completely blank out. But here we're talking about the physical realm, essentially. Work, money, your house, and even to some degree your physical relationships with people. So really the 3D physical realm, there's nothing, in my opinion, nothing overly spiritual about pentacles. It's just very grounded, very practical, very realistic. With the chariot, here we're talking about movement, actual physical movement forward for some of you. For some of you, this can even be as lame <laughs> as purchasing a new car. For others, it talks about physically moving from one area to the next, from one city to the next, from one country to the next, from one job to the next movement forward and with the chariot it's always movement in the right direction so we like we like to see the chariot because this means that you are unstoppable but again i reiterate that there is this nervous vibe this feeling to really get things started kick started and you're kind of sick of the delays that are coming your way but these delays are very natural there are a lot of key planets that are retrograde and going retrograde seriously this is the case for everyone here things will slow down uh, naturally and there's always a reason for this usually we shouldn't rush into big move like big changes we need we need to let things unfold, unfold as naturally as possible for the best efficiency. And it's surprising that I get this feeling, right? For Virgo, I think. It's, surpri it's surprising that I'm getting this vibe for Virgo because usually you guys are down to earth, very grounded, very stable, and you are usually a slow force. 
you're not a, a slow and careful force. And to be careful, you need to be slow. Um, we tend to make more mistakes when we when we speed things up and when we go against the natural flow of things, that's when a lot of mistakes start to happen. You guys can't be the perfectionists that you are if you if you hurry up and that's why you don't like it when people come to you and um, and pressure you to get something in really, really quickly. Okay, so for those of you who are efficient workers uh, and are therefore able to be very fast in the work that they produce, this is that's a different story. That is you perfecting your trade. That is you knowing what you're doing. So it, it becomes automatic. It, it's, it can become somewhat monotonous as well. So you don't need to put too much thought into your work in order to perfect it anymore because this is something that you might do or might practice on a daily basis as well. In fact, you know, I can think of, I can think of a couple of Virgos who recently in the last few weeks mentioned this about themselves. So I had one Virgo that said, I'm the person people come to in the office when they want things to get done quickly. Quickly and efficiently, I am the go-to person. I had another Virgo come and tell me the other day that they, they're not the type that likes to sit there for hours working on the same piece. They are rather quick at what they do and so they can produce a lot, they can produce things a lot quicker and therefore they their teammates know that they can rely on them and that's usually why they end up with a lot of work on their shoulders because they do their work quickly efficiently and very well because Virgos do their jobs very well uh, like like most earth signs actually you are hard workers and in this period your hard work can really produce a lot of financial return for you because Jupiter in Libra is a very fortunate, very auspicious aspect for you guys, actually. However, during this particular period now, for, so it already started in February, from February all the way up to uh, June, uh, Jupiter is actually retrograde and this means that if you're not careful in watching your finances then the reverse can happen where you are no longer fortunate in making money because you're not being as careful and as attentive to your spending habits so overspending during this time also when it uh, also um, in parallel to Venus uh, being retrograde can really um, have a negative effect on uh, Jupiter in Libra for you. So watch out, particularly up until June, watch out and make sure that you don't spend money on anything unnecessary. Um, it's advisable that you make a list in advance of things that you want to buy and really assess whether or not you need these things. In general, it's not favored to make any large financial tra transactions at this time either. Uh, but if you have to, if you need to, if you don't have any other choice, if you can't wait, then okay, by all means, go for it, right? I mean, who am I to tell you, no, don't make this decision, don't make that decision? Okay, so um, I've drawn uh, five cards from the Rider Way, and I will draw another five cards from the Deviant Moon deck. Your five cards for the Rider Way are as follows. I'll just lower the screen so that you can see what's going on. We have Justice, which is Libra. So I'm glad I talked about Jupiter and Libra for, for a little bit. Right next to it is this Nine of Pentacles that suggests things a lot stronger, actually, to me. That right now, um, during this time period, it, it is a good idea to focus on work and in relation to this auspicious aspect with Libra. So here we need to really pay attention to how we communicate with our co-workers, with our bosses, and how our spending habits are, are taking, um, 
take no that's wrong how our spending habits are influencing the decisions that we make and what we end up with at the end of the day in terms of um no whether or not we've made a good move or a good decision right down in the middle is this lover's card right next to it we have the fool and we have this ten of swords in reverse, which is good, actually. Okay. So, again, before we dive into the ca into the cards for, with more for more uh, information and into more detail, I'll, we've already covered these two, essentially. Uh, let's talk about just a few of the other major astrological events that are happening this month and how they could influence you. So. Mercury goes retrograde in your 8th house, Virgo. This will happen from the 20th of April all the way to the 3rd of May. And when it goes retrograde in your 8th house, in the 8th house, house, then we're focusing here on shared resources, uh, which means that it's really not a good time for you to rely on other people's money. So if you are still dependent on receiving a form of income from family or if you're expecting a friend to loan you some money or a bank to loan you some money or however way it goes. Basically, any money that you do not earn yourself, um, this is not a good time for it. So please don't rely on an external source of money at this time. This also means that you need to work harder than usual to make the money that you earn during this time. Um, on the 8th of April, uh, Mercury goes, so Mercury becomes retrograde in Taurus, okay? On the 8th of April. This also means that it's not a good time to negotiate work-related, <clears throat> wow, work and financial-related matters with authority figures, boss figures, anyone in the workplace. So it's kind of best for you to take your distance. And this might be a little bit difficult, actually, because when I think of Virgo right now, when I think of my personal Virgo friends and everything that they're going, going through at the moment, um, I know how frustrated it is for them in the workplace. I know how badly it is that they want to get out of their workplaces and move on to something that suits them better, move on to somewhere where they will be respected, their efforts will be recognized, they will be acknowledged. I know this for a fact. It's, it just can't be a coincidence that the Virgos around me are complaining about this. There's only one other, like only one Virgo that I know who is more or less, you know, they're satisfied with their work, but this doesn't stop them from complaining about how overworked they are, how overworked they are to the extent that they even told me the other day that they dreamt. They had a full night of sleep, okay, where they dreamt about being at work. They were at work in their dream. And to, like they woke up confused. They woke up confused because the dream was so real. It was a typical ordinary day at work for them. So when this happens, okay, we, we know that work is definitely on your mind, Virgo. Uh, it's something you can't possibly escape from right now. But it's not, So it's not a good idea for you to negotiate like a salary change or a salary increase or a promotion of sorts right now. Um, because it's more likely to be taken the wrong way while Mercury is retrograde. And it, in general, it's not a good time anyway to sign any new contracts, etc., etc. Let's get into matters of love so that we can kind of break down what this lover's card here might be referring to. So, on the 11th of April, you have a full moon, and the full moon will be in Libra as well. So this full moon is really going to kind of tug at what you find attractive in a mate and who you find attractive in a mate. Who? No. What you find attractive in a mate and who you will find attractive to be 
a mate for you, potentially speaking. And in this case, um, there is this opposites attract dynamic that might be uh, happening for you guys, actually. And so for me, it makes sense to talk about this lover's card because the lover's card also is Gemini. And Gemini um, is all about two faces, two personalities, and usually these personalities are very different, but yet they live in the same body very harmoniously so. So it seems appropriate to talk about opposites attracting during this time. Don't be surprised then if all of a sudden you are attracted to someone who doesn't fit your, your, your ideal. On the 11th of, around this full moon energy on the 11th of April, <clears throat> with this fool card here, uh, I think this has something to do, like for me, it would have, well, the fool card can also talk about Aquarius, right? So perhaps this attractive energy happens with an Aquarius. And it's it's kind of funny that I say this because I had a client the other day uh, yesterday, actually, who was inquiring about a Virgo, and this client of mine is an Aquarius, and I, I always like, so, brief digression that is very applicable here, because, you know, since we want to talk about this fool card anyway, and we want to talk about love and romance, romance, and I know you guys like that. Okay, so, uh, Virgo and Aquarius have a very unique relationship at least in my experience, right? Uh, for those of you who've been following me from the very beginning, you know that I don't shy away from talking about Virgos because I have a very karmic relationship, very karmic bond with Virgo in general, where whether or not I like it, I tend to attract Virgos into my life and I tend to fall in love with them very easily. Seriously. And this is before I even find out that they are a Virgo. I usually find out like a couple of days in, a few weeks in, it doesn't matter. After I'm already head over heels, madly in love with the Virgo, I find out when their, when their birthday is and I'm just like, oh great. <laughs> I'm just going to go for a joyride again, aren't I? The point is though that I'm not alone in this. I'm really not. I feel like this tends to happen a lot with air signs. We are kind of, we're, we're very attracted to our opposite element that way. Okay, don't start nitpicking, especially if you are an astrologer and you are watching this and you know your astrology. I know that the polar opposite for Aquarius is Leo. <laughs> and Leo is fire. I just feel though that honestly for um, in tarot, um, air signs, swords oppose pentacles. So when they are, when they are put together in a reading and in a spread, this means that we sort of ill define one another. When there, is a, when there is a pentacle placed next to a sword element, then, you know, here we kind of have to say that one draws energy from the other, basically. And earth signs tend to draw energy very well from, from air signs around them. We are, air signs in general are very mental in their way of living. We tend to really live in our heads a lot. But funnily enough, you know, if you ask Virgos as well how they go about their day-to-day -day life, they'll probably also say something similar, that they live in their heads a lot, that they think a lot, they analyze a lot. And I find this strange because we are the ones who should be doing this as air signs, right? So when we think a lot, and when we think a lot about our fellow earth signs, they feel this. They really do feel it. And they can feel it and interpret it in a number of ways. They can either receive it as positive energy or they can either receive it as negative energy. So for those of you beautiful uh, air signs who are watching this video, particularly Aquarius, okay, watching this video because you're intrigued about Virgo, watch how you think 
about Virgo at this time because it is very important that we don't feed each other negative energy. So if you think about your Virgo positively, they will feel it. It will practically radiate from you. They will know it. Even at a distance, they will know, oh, this person, they will sense it, that this person is thinking about them. So if you think about your Virgo in a negative sense, they're going to feel it as well, and they're not going to like it. No one likes this, right? So, um, opposites attract. That was why we kind of went into that little digression there. Opposites attract. Opposites attract, in this case, in the tarot, air, air and pentacles are usually opposing forces. And during the full moon, April 11th, this might be the case for you, Virgo. <clears throat> on the 15th of April, Venus goes direct, frickin' finally. So you can take a breather and say to yourself, okay, uh, I don't have to like be too careful now <laughs> with who I hook up with. Because usually when Venus is retrograde, we tend to like, our feelings are, are intensified and we tend to draw people in from the past as well where our exes show up out of the blue, they're interested in us all of a sudden, and they're trying to insert themselves back into our lives. And for some of us, that can be rather uncomfortable because we don't know how to deal with it. But actually, during a retrograde period, it's okay to hook up with an ex. Maybe. <laughs> Or if it's because, like, you already know each other, you don't have to rediscover each other, and yeah, there's room for improvement during a retrograde period if we're dealing with old projects, not new. So it's always better to wait for a new moon to come around. There's going to be a new moon on the 26th of April. So all new projects are favored during that time. But during a retrograde period in general, um, it's just better to go over the details of past projects, past relationships, so that we can improve the outcome of these relationships later on. Okay, so the Fool also talks about being risky, adventurous, and doing things on a whim and spontaneously and without much thought, actually. So that's nice. It's refreshing for you guys. And there's one aspect I just need to remember. No, I can't remember. Something like on the 28th of April is... I just can't remember what the particular astrological aspect is. Someone, maybe someone can comment if they know, comment beneath. But on the 28th of April is a good time anyway to kind of, you'll feel romantic, you'll feel more daring to put yourself out there, romantically speaking, um, which, which, is, which is nice, but that's all the way at the very end of the month. It will feel anyway for you guys at the end of the month like you're finally getting out of a rut. And we all want to hear that, right? So this feeling of stagnation that you may f be feeling currently. So this card flip came out in the reverse. But it's also come out at the very end of your reading that way. So let's assume for a second that now, currently, as I record this video, you're feeling like this, okay? So stuck, at a crossroads, you've reached an impasse, you're stagnated, there are just a million adjectives we can think of right now, okay? By the end of April, you'll feel much better. You will feel like you are coming out of this, and that's what we want to see. And it, it, could, it could very well be because your, your effort your mental effort goes from thinking about work to uh, back to thinking about opportunities and potential in love, which is nice. And it's a break. It's a break for you guys. Okay. Let's... Shuffle. 
the Deviant Moon and see if anything else comes up. Ooh, okay. We have the Ten of Cups. Right over the Justice card. And, oh, okay, no, 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 no. Sorry, guys. So Virgo is thinking a lot about, can be thinking, so not all of you, but some of you are thinking about family matters at this time and how it is that you can improve your family situation. That's more, I think this is more applicable to those who are really thinking about starting a family or if you already have a family and right now your utmost concern is to make sure that you can provide for your family then this is very valid. This Ten of Cups here going over Justice, our Libra card, where your focus and your time and your energy is more on making sure that you make enough money to provide a secure future for your family. And here we have our Chariot card. Make its debut. Again, over this Nine of Pentacles, thinking of ways that you can increase your money, your capital. For some of you, that means trying to find a new job opportunity where the salary is more lucrative. So somewhere where not only will you be recognized for your achievements, your hard work, and finally be acknowledged that way, but somewhere where hopefully you can also make enough money, if not more money, to uh, help you achieve independence that way. Because the Nine of Pentacles also talks about being independent. So also being able to work for yourself, being self-employed, and not having to rely on an external body of, for, for any funding, which is cool. And this card we have here, the Five of Cups in reverse. Five of Cups usually talks about disappointment and loss and the fear of disappointment and arguments as well in this particular deck here. In the reverse, this means that it's the last thing you want. Okay, it's the last thing you want with your partner and your mate. And I say this because it's over the lover's card. And I would say this anyway in general, even if the lover's card wasn't present here. So you're trying to avoid quarrels with your partner at this time, um, maybe because you are, or friends even, maybe because you are going through a tough period, uh, a tough period, and we've already covered the, the whole topic of how Virgos really, really hate to um, share their concerns with others in that way. So if they're going through a negative period in their life, they would much rather stay away so that they can deal with their own crap. They don't want to infringe their feelings of hopelessness or helplessness, which is usually temporary, with those that they love because they want to sort out their own headaches. And that's actually a good trait of Virgo. Now you see the problem is though, is that not all of us know this. So we usually interpret it in a different manner. We usually interpret it in the sense of, oh, this means that they don't trust us enough to share their burdens with us. They don't want us to know they're hiding something. They're ignoring us. They're this, they're that. Again, I say this. To those who are watching because they're curious about a Virgo. But that's not necessarily true, you guys. Okay? It is also kind of Virgo's obligation, though, to make sure that their partners are aware of this trait. So if it's at all possible, Virgo, to kind of ease your partner's mind this way, I would suggest doing that. Okay, so funnily enough, the hanged man contradicts 
the fool to me because the hanged man is all about taking pause and reflection oh well okay how it can relate to the fool is by giving yourself an opportunity to see things from a different perspective and that's something that the fool does for us anyway because the fool is very free-spirited and very adventurous it's almost like it's encouraging you to take on uh, to take on the energy of an air sign such as Aquarius, because the fool can talk about Aquarius, but not always, right? Um, and this is something, the whole free-spirited nature is something that Aquarius does very well, whereas Virgo, again, is more grounded, down-to-earth. Aquarius has their head in the clouds most of the time, and this is how you guys can learn from one another anyway. So the hanged man, in this case, to me, doesn't necessarily have to talk about uh, patience or sacrifice because it's also the card of sacrifice. But it doesn't have to talk about patience and sacrifice. It doesn't have to talk about putting things on hold either. In this case, I really think it talks about uh, changing your perspective on things and trying things out differently that way. We're coming out of this rut. Yay. The Page of Swords, finally seeing an opportunity for advancement forward. Finally seeing how you can really make a difference in the workplace or trying out a new approach and being, pers and being successful about this. And so it really makes sense, okay, that the hanged man comes before this because in order for us to be successful with a new approach or, or gaining new insight into how we can do our jobs better, uh, how we can think more efficiently, more effectively, we need to engage in a new perspective. But this will feel very liberating. It will feel very liberating for you guys. Cool. All in all, good reading, guys. Good reading. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support, subscribes, shares, blah, 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 blah emails, comments, everything. And I read everything. I respond to everything and everyone as well, hopefully. I'm still at a point where I can manage to do this. So um, I'm very grateful for all my subscribers, really. And if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please do. Yay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, yes. Announcing mid-month readings. I would like to start doing mid-month readings. So hopefully um, I will see you in the middle of April for your mid-month reading, Virgo. In the meanwhile, take care. Love you guys. 